Can I fit them all? We shall see. Okay, then we have purples. Then we have greens. And the super big boys, the oranges. Here's a lineup of all my colorful Skittles, competition kettlebells that is. And so we can just go down the line real quick and I'll tell you all the weights. The teal one is six kilograms, then we move up to eight. Light pink is 10. When a kettlebell is a lighter color, generally speaking, when a competition kettlebell is a lighter color and has markings on the handle like this black tape, that usually means that it's kind of a, a small step up kettlebell. So they usually jump up in like four kilogram increments, uh, but the step ups jump up a little bit less. Then we have 12 kilos in the blue, 16 in yellow, 20 in purple. The green one is 24 kg. And then the orange one is the heaviest kettlebell that I own, which is a 28 kilogram. That's my monster. And then we have this cute little guy. Uh, there's a kettlebell revolution happening right now. A company called Pro Kettlebells is attempting to perfect something that's been around for many, many years. And so we're gonna talk about that in this video as well. Over the last six weeks or so, I've been training to get my level one certification in kettlebells through IKFF, as well as Steve Cotter. Shout out to Steve Cotter. And the goal, the end goal, is to perfect my own skill of throwing around kettlebells, as well as to teach other people to do it here on our farm. And in a perfect world, if there's interest, I would like to combine kettlebells and wild edible workshops together because I think that health is like a puzzle. It's not just one piece that makes us healthy. There's a lot of parts involved. And so I'd like to attack the exercise as well as the healthy eating part of it. So if there's interest, that's what's coming. I've known about kettlebells my entire life because I came from Russia, but it wasn't until 2015 or 16 when I started filming my documentary, I Want Abs, about fitness, that I really fell in love with them. And I have to give my trainer at the time, Nick Gobler, a big shout out because, man, without you, Nick, I wouldn't be here today. Long story short, kettlebells are just a really great way to get in shape. They're a really great tool for that because they enable you to train cardio, as well as strength in the same exact training session. And so when I was working on I Want Abs, for example, I was doing kettlebells and functional fitness. At one point, my coach said, you should enter in some triathlons. And I said, well, that would be a crazy idea because I haven't been training for triathlons. I did it anyway, and out the gate, I started winning them. I think in the first triathlon, if my memory serves me, I got third place overall and first place in my age group. And the second triathlon, I just straight up won. So I attribute my wins there to good trainers, as well as building strength and conditioning in the form of kettlebells. And they're also a gym with a handle. You can take these kettlebells anywhere you want, whether that be outdoors or in your gym or anywhere in between. And so they're a really great way to get in shape while doing something a little bit different. Now I'm by no means dogmatic about kettlebells. I do other things, but I do have a fondness for them that's pretty rare. And as a result, right behind me, you see that whiteboard. As a result, I've decided to get my kettlebell certification through IKFF and Steve Cotter. And so six weeks ago, I joined them on a Zoom call and started the process of getting certified. And so right here in front of you, you can see some of my notes about how to do cleans, presses, swings, snatches, and squats properly. And since then, I've been training really, really hard out in the field as well as in my gym, trying to get in shape to certify. 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. So I'm in my seventh year now of messing around with kettlebells. I'm having a lot of fun. This practice isn't going anywhere. In fact, I'm doubling down and getting my certification. And so I thought it would be kind of fun to talk about a brand new product made by Pro Kettlebells out of Seattle, Washington, that's trying to revolutionize the sport of kettlebells, I guess, or, or perfect. Maybe revolutionize isn't the right word. Perfect, let's use that word. So that's kind of what I wanna do in this video. That's gonna be the focus. 
But as we get there, I just quickly want to explain to those that may not know what competition kettlebells are. There's lots of different kinds of kettlebells out there. Some of them have monkey faces, some of them have Darth Vader faces, some of them are made of plastic, and some of them just have a different shape altogether. But these in particular are called competition kettlebells because they are designed for people competing in kettlebell competitions. And what sets them apart really is that they're different densities, meaning some are lighter and some are heavier, like that orange one down there, but they maintain the exact same shape and size. So for example, let's get this one out of the way just so that there's no distractions. For example, this one right here is made by Kettlebells USA. I've partnered with them on some videos before. They make very high-end kettlebells. This is the Paradigm Pro Elite. And because this is the lightest kettlebell that they make, they actually had to cast this out of aluminum because the other metals they were using in this exact shape and size would have been too heavy. They couldn't have made their six kilogram mark with anything but aluminum. So that is a Kettlebells USA kettlebell. And while we're here, I wanna just quickly say that, um, actually, no, let's not go there yet. That's, we're going too fast. So this one's an aluminum kettlebell. This one is a cast iron kettlebell. And so it's a heavier steel and it's also a heavier bell. This is the eight kilogram. So, you know, as they go up in weights, the, the orange one right over here, this one's my big boy, the heaviest one that I own. And oof, this is definitely a two-hander because this thing is heavy. And so, because they have holes in the bottom, you can see that the aluminum one has much thinner walls, you know, just has thinner, less material everywhere versus the orange one has more material everywhere and it's made out of a different kind of material. Now, while we're on the subject of holes, let me just show you this. This was the first kettlebell that I purchased from a different company called Perform Better. And I love this kettlebell. I loved it then, I love it now. No, you know, I don't really have anything terrible to say about it. Only that uh, there's no hole in the bottom. And that just simply means that it was not made from a single piece of metal. It wasn't cast from a single piece of metal and that there's likely filler in this kettlebell. And I have practiced with kettlebells that had fillers in them before where the filler has come apart. Well, I don't know if it's made out of concrete or what, but it comes apart and it starts rattling and that rattle is really annoying. So when you're standing there and you're cleaning kettlebells or jerking them or swinging them, if they rattle, that's really gonna nag on you and really tap into that, like, get you, get, it gets me out of the zone. I shouldn't speak for other people, but it's annoying for me. The other thing that I potentially see, which could be problematic, is that if you have moving pieces that are rattling independent of how you're moving the kettlebell, that might actually affect how you do the movement, and so there's more, more chance to get injured, I guess. So that's why some kettlebells have a hole and others don't because the ones that don't have holes generally have something like a filler in the middle. So let's just quickly summarize that competition kettlebells are different colors because the colors represent a different weight. So that's number one. And then the big thing really outside the colors is that they're all exactly the same shape and size. So again, as you're doing movements, whether that be a simple swing, which isn't really that simple at all when you really get down to the nitty and gritty. Uh, but when you start doing different kettlebell movements, eventually your strength will build. And you know, then you wanna, you're gonna wanna progress. So you don't really want something that's small and then gets bigger because that will change how you do the movement. So. You start with one kettlebell and you use that same shape and size throughout your career, uh, except that the density will get more and so that it'll be heavier as you get stronger. In comes the disruptor. Well, bam, look at this thing. Kind of looks like Batman's mask. Looks pretty badass. Given that it's devoid of color amidst a sea of these colorful bells, 
it just starts looking like a superhero. This is the Pro Kettlebell made by the company Pro Kettlebell. You can see they have their weight stamped in here. Then there's another icon of the company and made in the United States. All of their kettlebells are made in America, which I think is important. So this company right here is trying to disrupt the kettlebell market, the competition kettlebell market by making better, more comfortable kettlebells, safer kettlebells, you could even say. And I found them on social media. I saw what they were doing. I got really excited about what they were doing. And so I've been reaching out to them for a year plus, trying to get some of their kettlebells in my hand. And I finally got some a few weeks ago. And so I've been putting these guys into my rotations, training one day with my Kettlebells USA kettlebells, and then the next day alternating with the pro kettlebells just to see how I like it. And um, well, I have two things to say about that. Number one, the jury's still out. I wanna be very careful about how, I, you know, what I say about them because they're still relatively new and I wanna make sure that what I say is 100% accurate and true. But number two, I'm getting very excited because <laughs> I'm starting to naturally choose this one over the other ones. So like, you know, I'm alternating, but now I'm kind of finding that I'm, I'm like, eh, maybe I'll use this one two days in a row. You know what I mean? And so without dilly-dallying any further, let me just quickly explain what they're doing. So number one, <laughs> these traditional kettlebells, they have kind of a small base to them, which makes them very unstable and wobbly. I mean, they're, they're so somewhat stable, but if your ground isn't totally level, like if you're doing it outside, um, it will wobble on you. And now that's not necessarily a bad thing. In fact, some fitness trainers actually prefer that because they say it strengthens your, your stabilizer muscles. I would like to think I work out in a functional fashion without having to do that other stuff, which just increases your risk of injury. And so that's just a long-winded way of saying that pro kettlebells notice this too, and they created a much wider base, thus making it a lot more stable. I mean, I don't know if the camera can even see that, but it's significantly bigger. It's like maybe 15 or 20% bigger. And so what this means is that when you're doing push-ups on it or, or various types of other uh, exercises where you're forced to put your weight on the kettlebell, it's gonna be much more secure for you. The other appeal to that bigger hole is now I can put my hand in it. And so now when I'm doing halos, for example, it's a different way that I can hold my kettlebell. Now when I'm doing squats, it's another way that I can hold my kettlebell, which gives me versatility versus here, you can kind of do it, but now you're working on your rock climber grip. And as you move up to the heavier bells, let's look at a green one here. You know, as you move up to a 24 kilogram kettlebell, holding it with your hands is not really, I mean, you could do it, but nobody in their right mind would. So the fact that there's a really big hole here is a really cool feature. One that I'm only starting to appreciate now. The longer I work out with this kettlebell, the more utility I see in this. At first, I was like, well, who, who cares, you know? But I do squat this holding it. And so it's very comfortable in that, in that way. And I'm also being told now that eventually the company is gonna have magnetic inserts that you can insert here, thus meaning that you can um, increase your weight. You can have fewer workout tools that are more diverse. Now, again, I want to be very careful when that happens to test everything meticulously, because like we already mentioned with the other, other kettlebell, that if something is rattling inside or coming apart, that's not good. But if they make a very solid magnet that you can stick on here, that makes this, you know, four to 24 kilograms more, that could be a really, really cool feature. Similarly to the wide base, they also made a notch here, which makes it more stable this way, right? It's still a little wobbly, but that's way more stable than this. 
you know, you're gonna have to feel this for yourself because it's easy to, to lie here, but I can tell you, if you trust me, if you've been watching my videos and I've developed rapport with you, this is much more wobbly than this. Say you're doing push-ups off your kettlebells or other movements. I prefer more stability. Now some people again will say this trains your muscles better, but I prefer more stability and less risk than the opposite. And the last feature is my favorite feature and it has to do with this horn. This horn right here. And this is probably gonna be the most difficult to demonstrate, but I'm gonna try my very best. So when you're swinging, pressing, snatching kettlebells, your hands are gonna move all over this handle. And in certain positions, they're gonna um, do different things, right? Let me grab the lightest one for this. So for example, you know, if I'm just swinging the kettlebell, maybe I'm more centered here. But at the top of my snatch, my kettle, my hand is gonna be, you know, straight. <laughs> and somewhere like this. I'm worried that you won't be able to see it. So I'm gonna try and sit here awkwardly. So at the top of my snatch, my kettlebell might be somewhere like here, you know, going across the kettlebell and in the corner, in the pocket. And so, because this is round, when my hand is in that pocket, the ball is literally just digging into my hand and my hand being soft, just being made out of meat is gonna give more than the kettlebell. So in creating this peak, they also created some really nice grooves where your hand can just naturally sit. So this is a much heavier bell, but that is pure comfort. As comfortable as it can be to be holding <laughs> a cast iron ball on your forehead, forearm. This is much more comfortable than this right here. And I didn't even think before that this was that uncomfortable. <laughs> That's the crazy thing. Like I, you get used to it and your hands like, man, yeah, I'm fine. It sucks. I'm, I'm doing something that requires endurance and that's hard, but you get past the point where you're slamming it on your wrist and it's actually chafing you. That being said, now that I've been messing around with these for a few weeks, I mean, my gosh, it's like a pocket. It's like a perfect little pocket for your arm to rest. And I don't know if you can see this or not, but my wrist is much more straighter and much more comfortable in that straight position. So that just means that I can bust out, it feels like I can bust out more reps, more clean reps with this. Now it's also worth noting that if your hand lands wrong, it's gonna end on this kind of peak. So if these are kind of like little valleys, this is a peak. And if your position, if your hand lands wrong and onto the peak, then it becomes very uncomfortable, very fast, more uncomfortable than this even. And so in effect, I've found that this kind of acts like a training wheel to not only be more comfortable, but reward me with that comfort once I land in the right position, if that makes sense. So it's kind of like training wheels to stop mucking around and get all your positions correct because when you're in the right position, this kettlebell is very comfortable. But when you're in the wrong position, oh, it's like acupressure. It's very uncomfortable. So those are the big features. And like I said, the jury's still very much out. So I'm not gonna definitively call it yet. I wanna give this a solid six months of constant use before I can say, you know, I endorse this product wholeheartedly. You know, presently, the world of competition kettlebells uses these guys. So I don't, I don't even know if they recognize them yet. But if things keep going the way that they are for me, I have a feeling that these guys might be disrupting some industries here shortly. I'll reiterate what I said earlier that this seems to be what I'm naturally reaching for. So um, I'm noticing that and <laughs> proceeding forward. That's more or less what I wanted to talk about in this video. 
Before I sign off, I want to quickly show you the, to those that may be interested how this kettlebell came because I have another one that just arrived in, in its package. And I really like how they pack their, their bells. There's no styrofoam that they use. And well, I won't tell you about it. I'll just show you about it. Let's go. Here's what the box looks like. You can see that I got the 16 kilogram, 35 pound kettlebell. The box is just a box. Where these folks shine is inside the box. Check out this packaging. I just think it's really neat because there's no styrofoam involved. Kind of comes with some pieces of literature. This is a little brochure that tells you about all the different aspects of the kettlebell, some of which we've talked about today. A couple pieces on how to hold a kettlebell, just some light reading. Uh, these folks also have an app. So I believe there's like a QR code in here somewhere where you can come in and boop, grab it with your phone. And then they actually have like free trials and stuff on their app, which teaches you how to use the kettlebell. Inside, you just pull on this handle. Let me make it a little lighter. And then inside here, that's the kettlebell. And that's the box. The kettlebell lives in a pouch. Ooh, look at that finish. Let's compare these puppies real quickly because we can. Pro Kettlebells actually told me not to do this. They sent me that one. They said, they said this one's more polished, show that one. Hopefully they don't hate me for this. So their first iteration, by the way, I really like it when companies perfect their products. So one of the reasons I'm even showing this is because I think it shows that somebody really cares about what they're doing when they take things and make it better. And so this first iteration of this Pro Kettlebell was kind of more porous. I tend to like really old things. I like old hatchets. I just bought a saw that I'm gonna restore that's old. And so I like when metal kind of pits and makes little grooves. I think that makes them look more badass. In the same way that I really like how my kettlebells that were loved and used look more than like a more new one, right? I just love things that are not babied. And so this first iteration kind of looks like that to me. But then again, looks like they polish it more, buff it out. And the sleekness of this isn't hard to look at either. I mean, that's like a good looking kettlebell right there. And best of all, it's a gym with a handle. You can literally take this thing anywhere. In fact, uh, this next week, my, my wife and I are going up to see our roommate, shout out to Avery and Joe, up in Idaho. We're gonna go on a ski trip. And I'm literally gonna bring a couple kettlebells with me because why the heck not? It's a gym with a handle. They're easy to transport. And um, I still have to train for my IKFF exam, so I can't stop. For those interested in getting more information, I will leave you some pertinent links in the description below. That's it, that's all. Thank you so much for watching. For more videos that are just like this, but completely different, subscribe to my channel, Butenko Films. Later.